Okay, so let's continue on with some more uh, important user account management details for our Linux systems. Uh, now, we had just left off with uh, creating a user Bob, learning some basic things about user accounts. Then, of course, we cleaned up the user Bob and deleted him uh, uh, just to kind of see how all that works. So uh, we're just back right now to just having the sandbox user on the system. And uh, for uh, the next few things I'd like to show, uh, let, let, let's bring Bob back. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and recreate Bob again. We'll do a sudo add user Bob, kind of go through this process again. We'll make a silly little password. And we'll type all this out. We'll just kind of leave the details sort of blank for now that are associated with his, his account. Hit Y. And now we've got Bob back. Woohoo! Yay, Bob. Welcome back to the system. Now, uh, what I'd like us to uh, emphasize here uh, from the start is that it's important to understand that when you create a user, for management purposes, users are also added to groups. So you need to start learning about not just how do you manage the an individual user and permissions that are associated with the user, but it's just as important to understand what about the group that that user might belong to. That, that, that's also a very critical thing to understand. So let's just start with our sandbox user. We've got two users now. we got the sandbox user and we got the Bob user. Um, and as we're looking at this, let's just start by saying, how can I tell what groups I'm a part of? All right. And so uh, the simple way to do this is to just run the groups command. There is a groups command in Ubuntu that will uh, be able to list out what are the groups that you currently belong to. So the sandbox user you can see actually belongs to a variety of groups. There's, there's more than one. Yeah, you can have a user account that belongs to a lot of groups. And uh, just, for, just for clarity purposes, that uh, uh, this is not something that I manually did for you. All right, so uh, realize that a lot of this was done when the system, when this Ubuntu system was first installed. It's not like I sat down and added a whole bunch of groups to this account before these computers were created. So that's normal. That's normal that usually your initial user account that you have that kind of comes with those pseudo privileges, uh, they usually have been uh, already added to a few different groups uh, on install. And uh, some of this is, of course, going to depend on what distribution are you on. Are you on Ubuntu or Cent or Kali? You know, you, you, your, your mileage is going to vary here with what groups you'll actually see. Um, if you want to check the groups of another user, you can pass a username into this particular command as well. So I could say something like, well, what about the groups that Bob belongs to? I could say groups of Bob. And then I'll say, well, the Bob user currently only has his own uh, in a group by himself. All right. Um, and so that's something we should also realize that when you create a fresh user, usually they're put inside a, a, a user group that has the same exact uh, name as their actual username. So that's normal as well, that you're kind of just uh, you're in a group of one when you start out and uh, we can continue to manage things from there. Um, another useful command that uh, kind of gives you similar information, but it also gives you a few other details as well relating to groups, um, is the ID command, ID. And so if you type out ID, you'll get the ID, not just of the name of the group that you belong to, but you'll also you'll start to realize that groups also have a number that will represent that. And we'll see a little bit more information about, about these numbers here in a moment. But this is just another way, okay? Realize there's multiple ways, there's multiple commands. I'm, it's not like I'm pretending to cover every single command that could give you group-related information. But the ID command is another one where you can kind of see here it gives us UID. This is a user ID. So this is the ID of your user account, the sandbox user. And then you get the GID. This is the uh, a group ID account for again for the sandbox uh, for the sandbox group. And you can kind of continue on and see that each of the rest of these groups that, that were listed out here with the groups command, they're also listed with the ID command. But but there's also this other uh, uh, this other ID number that comes along with them. So anyways, but whichever command you you want to learn, whether you want to learn about the groups command or the ID command, it, it can be useful to check to see what are the groups that this particular user actually belongs to. And when you're doing some more complex tasks, sometimes those numbers that you see right there uh, will become important numbers to reference. So, okay. So uh, let, let's, let's kind of continue on and uh, uh, start to see now how was the sandbox user able to run things as sudo? So remember, we were looking at the sudoers file. We, we, let's cat this out again. Remember, we had this, this sudoers file and the whole point of this file was you need to be an elevated user to look at this file and whoever's in this file is actually the ones who are able to uh, run, run our elevated per, uh, permissions, uh, run with elevated permissions, run as the root user account. So when we have this file, it's really important to manage not just the users that are listed in it, but also the groups that are listed in it as well. So hey, let's run this command again, but this time we'll head it, we'll we'll tack on a sudo in the front to say, yes, let's take a look at the sudoers file. And remember, this this is where we had tossed in. It's like, hey, we got the root user. We want to make sure we don't screw that up. And we had tossed in Bob in uh, previous uh, content. So uh, but 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 the thing we're really honing in on is all right, let's take a look at these groups. 
right? So yes, you could list individual users like this, but if you add in the percent sign, this would allow you to add in a group and say anyone who belongs to the group may also run things as as the administrator. So and that this this specifically is the one right here that we're interested in. The this percent sign pseudo, right? If we run that again, we'll see, yeah, our sandbox user actually belongs to the pseudo group. All right. And so it's a really common thing that when you're managing accounts, you don't go into the pseudoers file and just add every single user. That'd be a lot of work. That'd be a lot of maintenance. Usually you end up having a few privileged groups. And if you have a user that needs to be a privileged user, you simply add them to that group. Right. Um, so let's see how to do that. Let's see. How can I go and modify an individual user's uh, group account? And so we'll, I, I kind of want to show this sort of side by side as we go. So I'm going to keep my sandbox user on one side and on the other side this is where I'll log into Bob right so I'll do an SU over to Bob we'll switch users over to Bob we'll type in Bob's silly little password and it's like who am I well now I'm logged in as Bob right and we can confirm that same group information if I type out groups it's like yep I'm it's just Bob right now okay so let's see what this looks like if we're doing this kind of side by side here and say all right what if I wanted to start modifying someone's group information now because the group that you belong to can potentially give you elevated permissions it can add you to something that's in the pseudoers file yes in order to modify someone's groups you yourself need to have pseudo permissions to begin with so this is not something that bob is going to be able to do it would defeat the purpose right bob would just be able to add himself to the pseudo group and and then of course he'd have uh, he'd have the elevated permissions. so this command will require pseudo in order for it to work properly um and uh, again there, there's more than one way to do this but i recommend learning about the user mod command Command. Okay, sudo user mod. And this allows you to modify different attributes that are associated with an account. And one of those could be the groups. All right. And so the basic uh, options that we need to pay attention to when we're doing a user mod command is are we looking to append to the existing list of groups that a user is already a part of or not? All right, so a user is already part of a whole bunch of groups or potentially in the case of Bob, they're in a group by themselves. And kind of, it's like, do you want to add on to the group or are you looking to overwrite the list of groups that they're already a part of? Now, in our particular case with Bob, it's, well, we're trying to add a group, right? So in, in, in other words, we're gonna have to add on the dash A option to append this, uh, this addition to what he already has. So if he had other groups that he was a part of, we're not gonna trash those and get rid of those. You would then say a dash capital G to indicate what's the name of the group that you want to add Bob to. So it's like, okay, I'm going to do an append. I have a dash G and this will be able to allow me to say, what's the name of the group? And I want to add Bob to the pseudo group. All right, so you got to make sure it's like, okay, what's what's an actual group that's already in the pseudoers file? It's like technically it's like, well, we got admin and pseudo, but this is the one. We'll make we'll make the Bob user just like our sandbox user. They'll also be part of this pseudo group. And then finally, you have to say, well, who's who's the user account? Who who are you trying to make these changes for? So I could have something like Bob. All right, so we've got a pseudo user mod dash a dash g. Guys, make sure it's capital dash capital G pseudo space Bob. All right, let's run that. Let's run that and give that a try. It's like, okay, it looks like it works. All right, so how could I tell did my change actually work? What's well, like, well, let's let's confirm it with the groups command, right? I could say groups of Bob and it's like, hey, it says Bob now belongs to both Bob as well as pseudo. So if I just add Bob to pseudo, does that mean that Bob can now run commands as sudo? So if you remember, like, if you try doing something that we know requires sudo permissions, right? If I try catting out the sudoers file, we know that this is going to fail. You're going to have permission denied because this requires sudo. So it's like, okay, does Bob now have the power? Let's give it a try. If I try doing sudo as Bob over here, it's going to say, okay, confirm your password, Bob. Prove to me that you actually are Bob. And after you do this, it says... Huh? Bob, Bob is not in the pseudoers file. This incident will be reported. Huh? What's going on? Did, didn't, didn't we add Bob to the pseudoers group? It's like, well, we, we, we did add Bob to the pseudo group, and pseudo is something that's in the pseudoers file. That's true. But, you know, run the groups command over here. Groups. Oh. 
So you'll see when a user is already logged in, if you make user account uh, such as group changes, sometimes that won't actually go and affect the already active sessions. And so now we run into one of those cases where it's the classic, you know, IT thing of, hey, you got a problem, you got to log out, log back in, or, you know, restart the computer type issues. So, yeah, so long as Bob remains logged in here, because the change happened in another terminal, it hasn't taken effect in this other session. All right. So some of these changes will happen live if you specifically list Bob in the pseudoers file. This wasn't something that we had to do last time because we specifically named Bob in the pseudoers file. But this time we didn't actually change the pseudoers file. We changed the groups that this user belongs to. So if you're ever messing around with groups, it's always good to just make sure you tell your users, hey, log out, log back in again, and, and then hopefully the change will, uh, will be registered. So let's give that a try. I'll log out of Bob. I'll type exit. It's like, let's go ahead and log back into Bob. SU back into Bob. Go ahead and type Bob's password. And it's like, hey, now it actually gives us a little warning. It's like, hey, you, you've now logged in and you're actually capable of running things as root. Okay, so it's now, now if we give that command a try of sudo cat slash etc slash sudoers and we confirm that we are indeed Bob, it's like, yes, now, now we actually have the power. And of course, we could confirm this through the groups command. It'll actually go and show us, hey, you're, you're both part of Bob as well as part of, as part of sudo. Okay? So just paying attention to some of the fine details and uh, learning about that user mod command, this is a really useful command to be able to start modifying should a user be part of a group or not. If you want to add some new user to the system, great thing to pay attention to. Um, also uh, great to pay attention here um, to like what are some of the underlying files that uh, that actually keep track of this. So uh, just like we were learning about the slash etc slash sudoers file, anytime you see uh, settings like this in Linux, there's usually some configuration file somewhere, probably in slash etc, that will keep track of uh, these particular settings. And just like with the sudoers file, you usually don't want to go directly to these files and start modifying them directly. You know, you, you run the risk of kind of breaking things when you do that. Linux will let you do that, but uh, you know, just uh, kind of, you have to proceed with caution. So let's take a look at the file. Let's take a look at the file that actually contains a lot of this information. So yeah, it, it is a file that's inside etc. All right, so we could try catting it out and taking a look at it. I could cat out slash etc and the file is called group okay group so let's be real careful with this one a lot of people confuse this right groups is the command the file is called group singular all right so again use tab to help autocomplete things but group is the command or groups is the command plural whereas singular group that's the name of the file so let's take a look at this file and when you cat out this file you can kind of tell like hey that this file is actually kind of long especially if you've done a lot of changes to this particular file Right. If you if this was like an actual server being used in production, you could have lots of different groups that have been set up. And again, I want to emphasize most of these groups here, like I didn't create these. These were things that Linux created, that Ubuntu created specifically when the computer was installed or when software was installed. Okay. So what is it that you're looking at here on this file? It's like, well, every single line, the very first word on this line, that, that would be the name of a group. Okay, so there's all these different names of groups, and I kind of mentioned earlier that the groups do have a number. We saw that with the ID command, right? With the ID command, it actually showed us the number. So that number is also here in this file. And then the last piece of information after the final colon tells you what are the users that belong to this particular group. So as we scroll down and kind of saw that the pseudo user, or the pseudo group rather, was group number 27, it's like, well, that's where we can now see that Sandbox and Bob are both users that belong to the pseudo group. All right. And so it can always be useful, especially in a competition setting, to pay attention to what are the groups that are in my pseudoers file and then take it a step further to say, well, what users belong to those groups? Because I could have a user specifically listed in the pseudoers file. I could also have a user that's been sneakily added to one of these privileged groups. And now I've got user accounts that are capable of uh, running uh, elevated permissions. So, so definitely we want to pay attention to what's in this file. And, and, and understanding what groups are, uh, you're a part of is a, a very, very useful thing to kind of wrap out the, you know, the crash course. And how do I manage groups? And what are some of the things I really should care about from the start? Definitely I want to care about things like elevated permissions. Okay. So... That's some really good information. Let's kind of continue on with some other stuff about our user accounts.